As you look at Fred Cox now, about ready to kick off Super Bowl eight. Deep to receive, number 22, Mercury Morris. Number 13, Jake Scott. This game is played on artificial Ladies turf. and gentlemen, this is Jim Carolla welcoming you to Rice Stadium, Houston, so Fred Texas. Cox, Super ready to Bowl kick. eight. Mercury Morris. Number 14 to kick off for the Minnesota Making Vikings. That he is ready. Fred Cox. So under overcast skies, the Miami they Dolphins, tell us there will be no rain. 13, Scott, Super Bowl eight Mercury is Morris, about ready to start, and we're glad you're with us. This is going to be Jake Scott at the seven. Good run back, 38-yard line, collared by Terry Brown, and Miami's going to start off in a great spot on the field. I think this is one of the places that the Dolphins perhaps have an edge over Minnesota on special team performance. They have been just excellent. Paul Warfield, number 42, is starting. The tight end will be Jim Mandich, number 88. Wide receiver, number 86, Marlon Briscoe, will break from that huddle in a second. You know the runners, Mercury Morris, 22, Immediately behind Zonka, number 39, and Bob Greasy is the quarterback from the Miami 38-yard line. Warfield is to the left. This is Briscoe in motion. Mercury Morris trying to get outside. Carl Eller gets him from behind. He picks up about four yards. And uh, Bart Starr, I want to ask you right here at the outset, what could that man in motion that Miami used do to this defense of Minnesota? Well, Ray, first of all, it could force Paul Krause into becoming the strong side safety, a position he's not normally used to playing, and this creates also a specific coverage which the uh, Vikings are going to be forced to play also. We're not going to give you a rundown now of the performers on the field because they are as introduced before the game. Gain of four, second down, six Dolphins, Dolphin 42. Zonka. He picked up just a couple. The Dolphins are going to have a third and four, and Roy Winston upset him. This is an awesome Miami running game. Let's look at the blocking here as Kuchenberg comes behind. Larry Little gets a fine block on Jeff Seaman, but Eller and Gary Larson, with help from Roy Winston, managed to control the play at the line of scrimmage. Miami basically a running team. They threw the ball very little in the playoffs so far. This time, Greasy sets two wide receivers to the right, Briscoe and Warfield, on third down and four. This is Briscoe in motion. No, it's Warfield. That was Warfield in motion. Complete first down, 43-yard line of Minnesota, the tight end, Jim Mandich. And perhaps, Ray, we should also mention an injury, injury to this man. Mandich had a broken thumb. He had played previously with a cast on his thumb. That cast was removed, and now he's just got it wrapped very securely. Jim Kick was in the backfield on that last play, replacing Morris, but he's out of there. Morris is back in, as the initial first down of the game belongs to the Dolphins at the Viking 43. Warfield, left side. Briscoe, right side. Morris. Nothing there at all. First man to meet him, Alan Page. Bob Greasy, passing ever so sparingly in playoff action and for a very good reason. He hasn't had to. They've been able to control the ball on the ground. Greasy, by the way, says that he concentrates so thoroughly during the course of a game that he's not aware that there are people in the stands. He's not aware of what his teammates even are saying to him in the huddle. Many times they talk to him, but he doesn't hear Jim Kick is in the backfield, number 21. He's lined up to the left of Zonka. Second down, 10. Might have lost a half yard. There goes Zonka. And he has a first down inside the 30. Paul Krause, the free safety, had to make the tackle. Excellent blocking up front by Kuchenberg on Page. Zonka makes the good cut. It was a cross block, I beg your pardon, between uh, Wayne Moore and Kuchenberg. Kuchenberg blocking out on Jim Marshall. Moore blocking down on Page. The rest is good running by Zonka. Morris is back in. Dolphins first down and 10. Viking 27-yard line. Briscoe breaks to the right. Warfield comes left. Bobby Bryant is giving Warfield a lot of room. On first down, this is Briscoe. It's complete, 21-yard line in front of Nate Wright, the cornerback who shoved him out. It's going to, going to bring up a second down for the Dolphins. 
Super Bowl eight is just underway. The Dolphins took the opening kickoff, and by golly, the team that has been scoring first in these playoffs has uh, gone on to win every time, have they not, Pat? This is the kind of situation that certainly the Vikings do want to avoid. There is the other quarterback, the one that uh, Ray mentioned in his opening remarks, that wants to shed for all time the label that has haunted him, I guess you could say, throughout his career. The fact that he cannot win the big one. This is the big one. Second down, four. There's Zonka, and that might be another first down around the 16. He dragged Alan Page the last couple of yards with him. And there is Bud Grant, described as imperturbable. Speaking of men who have the ability to concentrate. It is the first down, Ray. Bud Grant explained, by the way, why he doesn't do much moving around on the sidelines, that he stays in the same place and doesn't pace as some of the other coaches do. He's one of the few who wears a headset and talks directly to his coaching staff. And he says the reason I don't move around is because I got a short cord. Marlon Briscoe goes to the right. Paul Warfield to the left. The Dolphins have a first and ten at the Viking 16. Zonka. What tremendous power. He's within two yards of a first down. Looked like it might be a gain of one or two, but Zonka turned it into about an eight-yard gain. He was hit almost at the same time that he got the ball. We'll watch it from the end zone here and see who makes the initial contact, but they don't get him down. But the offensive line for Miami is doing just about what they want to. Second down, two. The ball is at the eight-yard line of the Vikings. This is Mercury Morris. And that looks like a first and goal at the five. Jeff Seaman and Wally Hilgenberg made the tackle. Now, Alan Page is talking with one of the officials. I have seen no penalty marker. Just a conversation. It's a first and goal. There have been no changes defensively for Minnesota. It is still, as announced, Marshall, Page, Larson, Eller, Hilgenberg, Seaman, Winston. The two rights, Nate and Jeff, Bryant and Kraus. Don Schuler. Warfield will line up just outside the tight end. Warfield in motion. Zonka, touchdown. A methodical, beautifully executed drive, and the Dolphins are on the board first with 9.33 left to play in the first quarter. Pat. A play that developed and initially looked like it was going wide to Morris, but back inside to Zonka, and the rest he does by himself. Jeff Seaman is not lined up in front of the center here. He was way over on the weak side. And with the movement that he had to make, he just couldn't get himself set in time to meet the charge of a man as big as Larry Zonka. Extra point try. Earl Morrow holds. Darryl Premium kicks. And the Dolphins have the lead by seven, seven points. So in that drive, Greasy threw twice, completed twice. Zonka carried five times, 37 yards, got the touchdown, and it's 7 nothing. Maximum efficiency, Pat. That's about what you'd have to call that drive. If you diagrammed one, you couldn't put it down on paper any better than that. He premiumed a kick. 
Gilliam, 42. Charlie West, number 40, to receive. This is Charlie West at the goal line. Upset at the 13-yard line. Henry Stuckey, a defensive back of the Dolphins, made that tackle. And so Fran Tarkenton will start with a Minnesota offense that has seen one significant change. At right guard, you will see number 66, Frank Gallagher, in place of Milt Sunday, who had to be deactivated because of knee just did not respond. That leg injury didn't come around, and he is at right guard. Mick Tinglehoff is over the ball. The runners, Foreman, 44, Oscar Reed, 32. Foreman out to about the 19-yard line. Bart Starr, I wonder if I could ask you, in looking back at the Vikings' victory over Dallas when Tarkenton consistently was throwing on first down, was it the nature of the opposition, the type of defense that you think dictated that sort of a, a strategy on the part of Tarkenton? I certainly think so, Ray. I think that they felt that you could very well predict what Dallas was going to do, and I think this is the reason they did that. Doug Kingsrider, number 89, is in. He is a tight end. There are two tight ends in. Foreman. And he did not get back to the line of scrimmage. He was hit very, very hard. And there's going to be no gain on the play. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the National Football League is prohibited. Forward progress is ruled the 19-yard line, and for the Vikings, a key third and five. And Miami and their familiar, oh so familiar, 53 defense with just three down linemen and an extra linebacker, number 53, Bob Matheson. Parkinson has a third and five. This is Foreman. And he appears to be about a yard shy of a first down. Manny Fernandez showing tremendous lateral pursuit made the tackle. This is a play that uh, Minnesota used with great effectiveness against Dallas. Pass to Foreman out in the flat. He does a good job of running, but not a very basic job of holding on to the football or carrying the football, I should say. He didn't lose it. But when you get hit with the ball at arm's length like that, it's pretty tough to hold on. And so as Tarkenton goes to the sidelines, the punting unit comes in. Mike Eyshide to punt. Great return men. Dick Anderson, Jake Scott back as the Miami defense is equal to the first challenge from the Viking offense. Jake Scott on the run, and he loses the ball. Oh, the Dolphins. Somebody was very alert because Jake Scott was really cracked, and somehow he got the ball back. Let's look again. This could have been a big break for the Vikings as Scott... Really has got a scramble to get it back. Terry Brown had a shot at it right there. Ron Porter, the hitting 52. He picked up 52 on the Ron Porter hitting. I'm not sure. Older. He got it. From high above Rice Stadium in the misty skies over Houston, Texas. The synthetic turf of Rice Stadium. Along the sidelines, the Dolphins look out to the field as their offense takes over at the Dolphin 44-yard line. That was Ron Porter who made that big hit. Morris trying to get outside. Look at those moves. 
He turned what looked like a no-gain play, maybe a loss, into about a gain of five and a half, and Paul Krause made the tackle. Jim Marshall almost broke this play down before it got underway. Here comes Little to take him down, but Marshall made a good play. The rest of it is done by Morris and those quick feet. Boy, he can move him, can't he? Gain from the 44 to the 49. It is a second down and five. Out to the right is Briscoe. Over to the left is Warfield. It's a strong formation to the right with Mandits on the right side. This is Mandich, the tight end. Roy Winston, the linebacker on that side, the left side, shoved him out of bounds, but this is inside the 45 of Minnesota, and the Dolphins are on the move again with another first down. 6.15 left to play first quarter. Number 88, Jim Mandich. That's one thing I was checking over the multitude of notes that we have, and I'm sure everybody else does who's here about this game. The team that scored the first touchdown has won every Super Bowl game, and we're in number eight. The Dolphins are leading seven to nothing. First quarter. Three, seven, Mercury Morris this time. He dives to the 39-yard line. Paul Krause came up to help out Jeff Seaman, and Gary Larson was there too. And so Jim Kick, number 21, is going to replace Morris. Second down. A little more than five yards to go for a first down. A 10-play scoring drive by the Dolphins as they lead 7 to nothing. Zonka scored the touchdown. Greasy completed two of two passes in the drive. Crisco goes right. Nate Wright moves out with him. Warfield comes wide left, and Bobby Bryant gives him a lot of room. Zonka shedding tacklers. He has a first down. has just amazing body control and power. Don't underestimate the offensive line. They're doing a good job. As Norm Evans screened out Gary Larson nicely, but the rest of it again, as we said before, is that really just fantastic strength of Larry Zonka. And Bud Grant should be concerned. First down, Dolphins, Viking 32-yard line. Just five minutes now left in the first quarter. Behind the line, Jim Pick is met by Alan Page, and did he get off the ball fast that time? He is about as quick off the ball as any lineman in pro football. He lines up very close to his opponent and really just fires off. Kick had no chance. So one of the very few times as we watch Kick being hit by Alan Page that the Dolphins have lost anything so far today. It was a loss of two and a half. Call it second down 12 at the Viking 34. Zonka. Fantastic. He almost picked up a first down. Nate Wright and Paul Krause from the secondary had to make the tackle as they're continuing to run off that right side with great success off the Dolphins' right side. This is an excellent call by Greasy. Remember, it's second and 11, and the Vikings are rushing accordingly, expecting a pass. Bart? Pat, I was just going to second that. That was an excellent call because the Vikings were in a double zone defense to shut off both outside receivers that time, and I thought it was a beautiful call. Great place for it. Zonka, by the way, has carried seven times for 57 yards already. The two tight ends will go in now. This familiar maneuver by almost all of the professional teams. Marv Fleming now, number 80, will join Jim Mandich. And Marv Fleming is no stranger to Super Bowl competition. In fact, with this appearance, he sets an all-time record for one individual playing in Super Bowls. This is number five. Ray, he's made over $140,000 in playoff money. <laughs> That's more than I made in 10 years in the league. <laughs> Just now, Mercury Morris replaced Jim Kick. It is third, less than a yard, at the Viking 22. Zonka is lined up directly in front of Mercury Morris. There he goes, Zonka. First down at the 14. 
Jeff Wright and Paul Krauss again had to make the defensive play, which tells us again what this offensive line plus Zonka's power is doing. There's a guy right there with uh, blocking on Alan Page, number 62, Jim Langer, that you don't hear too much about. Zonka now up to 65 yards, but Langer is one of the best centers in pro football, no question about it. You just don't hear too much about him. Ever pacing, Don Shula looking on as his Dolphins have a first down now at the Viking 14-yard line. On first down, that's Marlon Briscoe at the one. Nate Wright and Jeff Wright made the tackle, but Greasy has been absolutely on target the few times he's thrown. And this is also a remarkable catch by Briscoe. Greasy threw the ball. Ball's in the air before Briscoe ever looked. And he's four for four now. Pat for 49 yards is Bob Greasy. Jim Kick is in now. The two tight ends are in. Mandich and Fleming. First and goal. Dolphins leading by seven. And less than a yard away from leading by 13. Jim Kick. Did he get it? Roy Winston upset him. No signal yet that he got into the end zone. So he stopped that close. I'm pretty sure his feet got into the end zone, but that's not the key in a situation like this. The ball has to get over the, into the end zone for a touchdown to be called. They didn't argue too much, so they must have been satisfied. So second down, goal, a foot away. Bob Lertzema is in defensively for Minnesota. Touchdown, Jim Kick. So the Dolphins strike the first two times they have the football. We've just got a minute and 22 seconds remaining in first period. We'll look at the touchdown again. Minnesota's run just three plays. Jim Kick. Kuchenberg with an excellent block on Lurtzema right there. For the second time, the Premian will try for an extra point. Earl Morrill, the holder. just is not anything that a team should be asked to do offensively and defensively that the Dolphins have not done so far. They've had the ball twice. They've scored twice. The Vikings have had it once. And the defense shut off that Viking offense once. Almost exact duplication of the other scoring drive. Ten plays on each occasion. The Premier ready to kick. Gilliam and West to receive. Charlie West at the five. A marker is back at the Viking 20 yard line as West went out of bounds at the 24. Bill Brown, the veteran running back of the Minnesota Vikings, checking with the officials and referee Ben Dreif in a moment will give us the call. Holding Minnesota. So to add to the Vikings' woes, they must start here. Fran Tarkenton and his offensive unit from very deep in Viking territory. The Vikings will have Grady Alderman, 67, 
Ed White, 62. Mick Tinglehoff, 53. Frank Gallagher, 66. There again is that same holding. By the way, on Sunday, the 27th of January, the CBS Eye on Sports will become a weekly feature here on the network. This fast-paced sports news features and commentary program will be hosted by our colleague Jack Whitaker. Right here on CBS, where you see the best in sports on the number one network. Vikings from the Viking 11. On first down, Tarkenton, the foreman. He is again out to the 16-yard line. It'll be second and five. And Mike Colan and Dick Anderson made that defensive play. Since we did not introduce the Viking offensive unit before the game, nor the Dolphin defensive unit, let's do that right now. We got down as far as Frank Gallagher, I believe, the right guard, playing in place of Milt Sunday. Ron Yerry, number 73, is the right tackle. Stu Voigt, number 83, is the tight end, and he's joined now by another tight end, Doug Kingsrider, number 89. The running backs are Chuck Foreman, number 44, the brilliant rookie. Oscar Reed, number 32. Wide receiver, John Gillian, number 42, is out to the left. This is Oscar Reed. Manny Fernandez colors him after a gain of a couple. Bud Grant, of course, on the left side, and Don Shula. Get a good look at that, because this is what they look like in their playing days, which was back about 1950. Bud Grant and Don Shula. Both the Vikings. were great competitors, I'm sorry. For the Vikings, third down and four, and Matheson is in that Miami Dolphin defensive unit now. Foreman in motion. Doug Kingsrider, the tight end, has the first first down of the game for the Minnesota Vikings, and he really cut that in traffic, but that <laughs> took a heck of a catch to get the Vikings their first first down. That might have been the final play of the first quarter because the last five seconds are right now ticking away. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. The Miami Dolphins 14, the Minnesota Vikings nothing. You come back, remind me to set the defense. It's going all right. All I would ask you to do would uh, remind me to, uh, that, you know, when Bart wants to bring in something, you'll alert me through you, right, as we did in rehearsal. Okay. Right, right, right. He wants to know if you have anything for him. Uh, he wants to know if you have anything for him. He'd have no, I was talking to Cleaver, I'm sorry. The preceding announcement was brought to you by the National Football League. For the Dolphins, Bill Stanfield, 84, Manny Fernandez, 75, Vern Denherter, 83. Bob Matheson has been added, number 53, to linebackers Doug Swift, Nick Bonacani, and Mike Colin. First down, Vikings, Viking 27-yard line. Foreman. He's out to the 32-yard line. Bob Matheson made the tackle. And now the remaining members of this Dolphin defense. They've been on the field such a very short period of time, we haven't had a chance to give you a rundown. The cornerbacks are Curtis Johnson, 45, Lloyd Mumford, 26, Dick Anderson, 40, Jake Scott, 13, are the safety men. The Vikings picked up five yards on first down, so it's first and second and five now at the Viking 32. 
And uh, Minnesota still going with the two tight ends. I think probably because of the frequency in which Miami plays that uh, defense with only three down linemen, with an extra linebacker. They feel they can run against it, or they should be able to. Oscar Reed, just across the 35, and Minnesota will have a third and one and a half, and it was Manny Fernandez, number 75, who stopped the running play. Now, Bob Hines, number 72, will replace Matheson. And the Vikings are going to make a change. Number 68, Chuck Goodrum, is coming in. And Doug Kingsrider goes out. And Goodrum has many times come, on, come into play on a short yardage situation. Uh, if he lines up on the end of the line, which he is doing now in the backfield, in fact. Well, not now, but he is an eligible pass receiver. He is reporting to the referee. Oscar Reed might be short. He needed to reach just beyond the 37. The Vikings, uh, or the Dolphins, are already sending in members of their special team anticipating a Minnesota punt. In the Dallas game, uh, Bart, I'm not sure how many times, but the Vikings again and again in a situation like this, they went for the first down and Bud Grant okayed it. They certainly did, and they made every gamble they made that day pay off for them, Ray. But as I recall, uh, it was in deeper in Dallas territory than where they are now, and the punting unit is coming on. So Mike Eyshide will punt as the Dolphins lead the Vikings by 14 to nothing. That's uh, Alan Page apparently talking with Neil Armstrong. Pat, did you guess what? I think he got the uh, headset. Carl Eller. That is Carl Eller who got the headset away from uh, Neil Armstrong to talk, to talk with one of the Viking coaches upstairs. Jake Scott at the 21. He gets it out to the 28. And there he met Mick Tinglehoff. Now let's see. Can the Dolphins quite possibly put together yet another scoring drive? They've had two touchdowns, both of them 10-play scoring drives. No changes for Miami, no changes for Minnesota. Zonka and Morris will start out as the running backs on first and ten. Both wide receivers are on the left, Briscoe and Warfield. Briscoe in motion. Mercury Morris. Beyond the 40, chased out of bounds by Jeff Wright. Lightning quick, Mercury Morris gets outside. This is one of the best-looking offensive units I think I've ever seen. The block by Kuchenberg took Eller out. Zonka got the block on uh, Jeff Seaman. Mercury Morris cut, got away from Winston, and then his speed did the rest for him. First down, Dolphins. Dolphin, 42-yard line. 14 nothing. Minute. The Vikings have not been able to get to midfield. Zonka trying to get outside. And he is held, and I use that word advisedly, held to about a three-yard gain. And that was Wally Hilgenberg who got to him at the out-of-bounds line and helped from Jim Marshall. Gain on the play, two and a half yards. Kick comes in, number 21. That touchdown scored by kick, the Dolphins' second of the game, was his first of this 1973-74 season. 
young man next to Don Shuler behind him now is his oldest son, David, who keeps charts and records that uh, Don likes to refer to. Second and eight. Good Good Alan Page gets greasy. Roy Winston came on to help, so the Vikings were blitzing on second and eight. So there's something that will go into his notebook, young Shula. Well, we mentioned before how quick Alan Page is off the ball, and he lines up many times. It looks like he might even be off sides, and then as quick as he is, if he has a gap on either side of the offensive guard, he just by you and into the backfield before you can make a move. There was a loss of 11. It is a third down and 19. Jim Kick, number 21, is in. Briscoe to the right. Warfield to the left. He's throwing for Briscoe. And Greasy really got decked. I don't know how he got rid of that football. Carl Eller hit Greasy the instant he released that football. And he still was right on target. There is no way that he could have known... Whether that pass were caught or not. Mark Starr? Thank you very much, Pat. I think right here in this play, we're going to see why Paul Krause is such a great free safety. Watch how far he comes on this throw. Keep your eye on him. Keep your eye on him. Just watch him come here. His action says it all. The ball was well thrown, but look how far he came. That's great the free safety. And you know, Bart, that's the first pass that Greasy has not completed. Larry Seipel to punt. Oh, an all-out rush, but he gets it away. Fair catch. Bobby Bryant. Vikings will have it at the Viking 27 as the Dolphins, for the first time today, are forced into a punting situation, and the play that set it up was a great play by Alan Page in nailing Greasy. Tim Foley and Joseph Murphy. Thing. <laughs> Change for the Dolphins at the left corner. Tim Foley, number 25, in place of Lloyd Mumford. First down, Minnesota, Viking 27-yard line, and there's Larry Zonka, who has already carried for big yardage and scored the first touchdown. Kings Rider, number 89, is wide to the right. Gilliam to the left. This is Foreman. Pickup of about three yards. Dick Anderson from the secondary and Tim Foley, his teammate in that second line of defense, made the tackle. And now on second and eight, Bob Matheson comes in, Bob Hines goes out, and that'll happen a lot of times. Anytime the Dolphins think they have you in uh, even a possible passing situation, they make that change. This time, Gilliam and Kingsrider are to the left. <laughs> Matheson, along with Den Herder and Fernandez, Dale Tarkenton inside the Viking 20. This is what makes that defense so tough to block out because you don't really know if Matheson's going to rush or if he's going to drop off in pass coverage. This time he does rush. He gets away there from Gallagher and then Burns in Herder and Manny Fernandez take Tarkenton down. 
Loss on the play of 11 yards. Third down, 17. Larry Zonka apparently sustained an injury around his one eye. So on third and long yardage, King's Rider goes right. Gilliam comes left. Ten and a half minutes left to play in the first half. 14 nothing Miami. Tarkenton. King's Rider. The Vikings believe he should have been ruled to have been in bounds. Let's watch it again. King's Rider, who is normally a tight end, being hit by Tim Foley, getting back up. I don't think he had first down yardage when he had to come back for the ball, but perhaps he did. They dropped the markers on the sideline. Got to have both feet in bounds. And our view is just obliterated. It was ever, ever so close. But he was ruled out of bounds. Mike Eyshide to punt. He hits a very good one. Fair catch. Jake Scott, 34-yard line of the Dolphins. This Tuesday night on CBS, the NBA All-Star game from Seattle, Pat. You'll be there for that game that starts 9.30 Eastern time. All the game's great players compete with the East, of course, against the West. The Eastern players include Dave Callens, John Havlicek, Lou Hudson, Pete Maravich, Bob McAdoo, and the like. West players, Rick Barry, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Jeff Petrie. Great players all in the NBA All-Star game. The best in basketball on the number one network, right here on CBS. Dolphins at the Dolphin 34-yard line. That's Morris in the slot to the left. Disco coming in motion. Zonka trying to get outside. And this time, the Dolphins closed it in pretty well as cornerback Nate Wright turned it in. Eller and Larson were there to make the tackle. A marker was dropped on that last play. Personal foul against Minnesota. So a costly penalty now, and instead of a short gain on Zonka's run, a major penalty against the Vikings with just under 10 minutes left to play in the first half. And the ball comes over to the Viking 49-yard line. And referee Ben Dreif now gives the signal again. Personal foul. A capacity crowd here at Rice Stadium in Houston, Texas. I didn't see him. And Wally Hilgenberg was the man ruled to have committed the personal foul. Linebacker for the Vikings. First and ten, Dolphins. Bryant really hit <laughs> Paul Warfield grabbing off his I think that's his first catch of the game and he really was was greeted by cornerback Bobby Bryant but a gain on a play of six yards and it'll be second down and four and Greasy has completed all of his passes let's see except one five out of six 55 yards Warfield left, Grisco right, second down, four Dolphins. Zonka, about a yard short of a first down at the 40, as Hilgenberg and Seaman pinched in to make the tackle. For the most part, Miami has been double teaming Alan Page with uh, center Jim Langer and left guard Bob Kuchenberg. And there is the double team again. This time Wayne Moore is involved, and they did a fine job. Two tight ends, Mandich and Fleming, on third and less than one at the Viking 40. Warfield comes right. Morris, first down. ran into one of the officials or he might have had even greater yardage. Paul Kraus had to make the tackle at the Viking 30. Again, that offensive line. Look at him come off the ball. Zonka leading the play through. Mercury Morris. There's some argument as to who is the strongest man 
on this Dolphin team. But Merck is certainly one of three. The other two are Fernandez. The other one is a rookie guard named Newman, Ed Newman. Briscoe is back in. Fleming is out. First and ten Dolphins. Zonka. An incredible performance by Larry Zonka. They just can't get him down. Morris leading the play. Zonka now has 81 yards and 12 carries. He picked up about eight that time, eight and a half, but second and less than two. And almost eight minutes remain. In the first half, the Dolphins scoring the first two times they had possession. And Miami very, very close to breaking this game wide open. There goes Zonka again. This time, there is nothing there at all. And the man responsible, young middle linebacker Jeff Seaman, with help from Jim Marshall. Seaman wears number 50, Marshall is 70. Jeff Seaman has done quite a job. He is, of course, number 50. And he's the man, uh, whether it be Seaman or Bonacotti, that really the offensive line has to contain and control. Because the middle linebacker is the key to almost every defense. I think we can label this maybe the most important play of this first half. It could decide whether the Dolphins go on and really do break it wide open. Zonka, and he didn't get the first down. He is just short of the 20. He was upset by Carl Eller. Gary Larson helped out. And the kicking unit goes on. So, Garrow Ipremian will try to put the Dolphins in front by 17 instead of 14. As Don Shula has made the decision to go for three. The clock running. When the ball is snapped, about six minutes will remain in the first half. And again, the holder is Earl Morrow. This will be an attempt of 28 yards. He certainly has the distance, and he's right on target. So, what department have the Dolphins not excelled in so far? They've done just everything that could be asked of a football team and as a result with 602 left lead by 17. Total yardage so far, net, Miami Dolphins, 153, Minnesota Vikings, 27. The Premium getting ready to kick. Sort of a squibber. It was overrun by Gilliam, and Charlie West will have to watch it roll over the end line for a touchback. So the Vikings will start from the Minnesota 20, and correct me, Pat, I don't believe Minnesota's been uh, in Dolphin territory yet. Not yet. Miami has already scored more points, 17, than any other team has in a Super Bowl in the first half. Mumford has replaced Foley now at the left corner, Lloyd Mumford, number 26. Other than that, the Dolphin defense remains as it has been most times. Foreman. Dolphins closing fast in the person of linebacker Doug Swift and the
the brilliant foreman is held to a gain of a yard. And King's Rider comes off the bench now, number 89, and he'll replace Carol Dale, who was in on the last play, as Bud Grant looks on as his Vikings are have a long, long road to go. This is probably an offensive change we'll see throughout the day. It looks like something new for Minnesota. That is the two tight end offense, and they'll use it particularly against this defense for Miami with only three linemen down. Second and eight. Chuck Foreman, the intended receiver, but almost picked off, and it's going to be third down and eight. We mentioned before that it's overcast and uh, very misty, but 52 degrees, and uh, we're told no threat of rain here in Houston. And uh, that gives us a chance to remind you that the unprecedented cold weather in Kansas City, where it's 5 degrees below, we're told, and 14 to 16 inches of snow, has forced workouts for the AFC-NFC Pro Bowl game to be switched to San Diego. For the Vikings, a third and eight. This is caught by tight end Stu Boyd. Well, there was a great catch. And it's a Viking first down at the Viking 39-yard line. It is a great catch, Ray. He had to come back for the ball just a little bit. His feet slipped. He had quite a bit of rain here during the week. But he still kept his eye on the football and came back and made a fine catch. Stu Boyd, he's had a good year without much recognition. First downs. Tells quite a story. Sometimes uh, first downs are misleading. Not in this game. This is Oscar Reed unable to hold on. And closing in on him was Doug Swift. Ball might have been thrown just a little bit behind him. And he had to make a, a turn. I'm sure he would didn't want to make. I don't believe that the most rabid Miami Dolphin fan, Pat, and Bart Starr expected this kind of dominance by their Dolphins over the Vikings at this stage of the game, certainly. I don't, I don't think, think so either. <laughs> we said in unison. Said I don't think so either. <laughs> <laughs> Bob Matheson now comes out of the lineup, and that means that Bob Hines is back in. Second down and ten. Nope, they're still going with three down men, and an additional defensive back, Tim Foley. Foreman trying to get outside. Vern Denherter held him up behind the line so that he was able to get back just to the line of scrimmage. And it is going to be third down and ten. And remember, the Vikings have yet to cross midfield. And only four minutes and ten seconds remain in the first half as this Miami Dolphin defense has been just nothing less than brilliant. Third down, ten. Gilliam right. King's right or left. Fine catch. Stu Boyd, 45-yard line. He ruled the 46-yard line that it was dead. Lloyd Mumford thought he had the football, but it is ruled to be in possession of the Vikings with three and a half minutes left in the first half. Here it is again. Another fine catch by Stu Boyd. Another good throw by Tarkenton. Bart, Fran Tarkenton has now, of course, the obvious battle of the clock as well as this Miami Dolphin defense. Well, he does, and the thing that I wanted to mention right here was that he deserves a lot of credit for finding someone open into that maze. Oscar Reed, the man in motion. This is Gilliam. And he'll wind up with about three very tough yards as Dick Bonacani and Mike Colon. Two of Miami's linebackers played very well against that pass completion. I think one thing about this uh, Miami defense, played so well all year long, they have so many different variations that they can throw at you. They deal really in confusion. As Bart said a minute ago, it's a maze. The problem is they don't get confused, they get you confused. Rookie Jim Lash, number 82, is lined up as a wing back right on second down seven. At the Dolphin, 43. Foreman in motion. Fumble. I think Tarkenton held on, but loses a couple, and Vern Denherter was on top of him. 
Looked like they were trying to flood receivers on the right side that time, Pat. Well, they had Jim Lash and Chuck Foreman as well as Gilliam out, all out on that same side. I have Miami, if uh, you've ever watched them play, you know they play one of the finest zone defenses in pro football. And we, in order to beat a zone, you got to put a lot of receivers into one area. That whistle means that we have a two-minute warning. Two minutes left to play in the first half. The Vikings struggling to get on the board and trailing 17 to nothing with two minutes left in the first half. Right. As the Vikings are faced with a third and nine at the 45 of Miami, it might be well to keep in mind that Fred Cox of Minnesota, his longest field goal of this season came in the playoff game against Dallas of 44 yards. So uh, he would have to be considered to be beyond his range right now. It's the 53 defense featuring Bob Matheson now on third and nine. Gilliam. He's down at the 15 yard line. Curtis Johnson finally got it. And the Vikings have immediately asked for a timeout, and they'll have a minute 46 left to play in the half when play is resumed. Bart, how about that for a brilliant pattern run by Warfield? Well, it was an excellent route run by John Gilliam. I'm sorry, Gil Gilliam, Bart. As our viewers are going to watch right here this is Gilliam coming out and it's a, probably one of the deeper patterns you'll see thrown against this but very effectively he's going inside here the ball is on rhythm and now this all this guy also has the ability to do something with it once he catches it this is a great play by Fran Tarkington and John Gilliam so number 42 of the Vikings John Gilliam runs uh, the sort of a pattern that we saw Paul Warfield, number 42 of the Dolphins, run in their playoff victory against Oakland. It's something that uh, Gilliam and Tarkenton both used, I think, fine judgment in. And looking at that uh, defense, Bart Starr was just pointing out a minute ago, it is almost impossible to get behind those three deep men in the Miami zone. They just take off. So Gilliam, I think, used a lot of judgment in cutting underneath. Foley has replaced Mumford. Tarkenton keeping. And he's down to the seven or eight yard line within about two and a half yards of a first down. And I don't think there was any doubt that that was a planned play on the part of Tarkenton. No doubt about it. He never even looked uh, for anybody to throw it to. Plus, the offside of his offensive line was downfield blocking, trying to set up a wall for it. Second down, two and a half at the Dolphins, seven and a half. Oscar Reed, and he gets nothing at all. He's met by Bob Matheson, number 53. The Vikings ask for a timeout. One timeout remaining now to Minnesota, and it is going to be third down. Let's see where the ball is placed. As Tarkenton is going to consult with the Minnesota coaches, it's going to be third down and still two and a half yards for a first down. I think, Ray, one of the worst things that can happen to you in, in a, a football game or in a season or whatever the case might be is to become... To become predictable and we have said uh, so many many times when the dog when the Vikings get into a situation where they need short yardage for first down they run toward Ron Yeary who they consider to be their finest offensive blocker they have done it twice without success they did it just then with Reed they did it once before this gives us a chance uh, as you look at John Gilliam 
to remind you that uh, he and Jim Mandich of the Dolphins will be among the NFL players making a trip to Korea, Japan, and other Far East locations. It's the ninth straight year the NFL has cooperated with the USO and the Department of Defense. The great thing they've all done has all been in their own time. We are sure, of course, the hospitalized American servicemen certainly do appreciate it, as do the sponsoring USO and the Department of Defense. Gilliam, Mandich, and more will make that trip. Third down, about three yards for a first down. The ball at the Miami 8. A minute, a minute 13 remaining in the first half. Oscar Reed. And from the defensive unit, number 88, Alan Page looks on as Reed carried to the six. Now, here is a big decision. Are the Vikings going to be satisfied with three points? Are they going to go for a first down? And limping off the field is Vern Denherter, number 83. And Bob Hines, number 72, is going to replace him. And they're going to go for it. Time left. Less than a minute, and the clock is running. Two tight ends, Kings Rider. Chuck Goodrum, number 68, comes in. Fourth and one at the six. Vikings have one more timeout remaining. Oscar Reed, I don't think he got it. Nick Bonacani, the middle linebacker, made a great defensive play. And the Vikings went for the first down. They came up empty. And the Dolphin defense has made a tremendous play. Now that's three times in crucial situations where they've run to the same spot. Ed White pulling, but they're running behind the blocking of Ron Erie. And as I said a minute ago, the worst thing that can happen to you, or certainly one of the worst, is to become predictable. Bart, do you have any thoughts about that situation that, of a moment ago? Yes, I do. I, uh, I think he pointed out very well. Miami went to the area just as quick as the Dol uh, as quick as the Vikings did. So the Dolphins have the ball at the Dolphin five with 30 seconds left in the half, and Zonka burrows straight ahead for a yard or so. Let's check what Larry's running yardage is so far here in the first half. He has gained 83 yards and 15 carries, has Larry Zonka, as Bud Grant and uh, Fran Tarkenton were just chatting an instant ago, and the final seconds are ticking away, and I would doubt whether we'll have any more plays here in the half, except that the Vikings called time with 12 seconds remaining. And as I mentioned a minute ago, that's their last one. And this becomes, uh, I suppose, one of the important points of the first half, the fact that they had to use two other timeouts on that previous drive when they didn't make the first down. Now that's their last one. There's no other way for them to stop the clock now. Bart, I wonder if I could ask you, it, it, it just seemed to me that, uh, that failing to get that first down and failing to score and ignoring the three points, it seemed to be almost certain it could do a tremendous thing to the morale of the Vikings. It certainly could, and it, I think we're going to take a good look at that in the second half. But, you know, they have done a good job coming up to now and, and taking some gambles. They've paid off for them, and perhaps they really thought they could get it. Obviously, it was a very short distance to get. Second down and ten at the Dolphin five. Clock will start with the snap. Zonka protecting the ball has carried for the final play now of the half as the Vikings timeouts are gone. That's the end of the first half with the score. The Miami Dolphins, 17. The Minnesota Vikings, nothing. The statistics in the first half, as you can see, uh, favoring Miami by quite a margin, on the ground in particular. What do you think is going to have to be done here by Minnesota? It's a very difficult situation to be in against a team that plays uh, all phases of the game as well as Miami does. This is the man, of course, who faces that challenge, Bud Grant. The worst possible situation that can happen is to try to come from behind against a team like this. If you go back and look uh, how many times that happened during the regular season, Miami outscored their opponents in the first half 213 points to 69. So they're used to being in this situation. 
Uh, they are a team that uh, does not panic when they get ahead. They are basically a conservative football team, and that's the position they find themselves in right now, a very enviable position because they can afford to do what they do best in this situation like this, and that is keep the ball on the ground. They have just an awesome running attack. Minnesota can't afford to do that. They've got to take some chances. They've got to put the ball up in the air, and they're doing it against a very, very fine Miami defensive unit. So the final huddles are over. The second half is about to begin. Just uh, in that rare case that you may not have been with us, it is 17 to nothing in favor of the Dolphins. Zonka scored the first touchdown, kicked the second. The Permian added both extra points and kicked a field goal. The Vikings gambled fourth and one at the six-yard line of Miami and did not get the first down as they turned their back on a three points from Fred Cox, the kicker. So a Permian prepares to kick to John Gilliam and Charlie West, and shortly we will know whether the Vikings can get something going and get back in this game. Gilliam at the one. He got away from the Permian. A marker is down. Tim Foley might have saved a touchdown, but there's a marker down at the Viking 21-yard line, and I do believe this is going to be called back. Clipping against Minnesota. That's the kind of break to begin the first half that the Vikings really needed to give themselves a lift. That could turn out to be the penalty of the game. So the infraction occurred in the vicinity of the 21. The Vikings must start from just beyond their 10. As again, referee Ben Dreith indicates clipping against Minnesota. So Gilliam's brilliant return is nullified. And as uh, Bart Starr pointed out at halftime, the Vikings are going to have to look at that 53 defense, and it's Stu Boyd who was guilty of clipping. Gilliam and Carol Dale come out wide left. Veteran receiver Carol Dale. Foreman gets about three. And Bart Starr, I'd like to ask you what the presence of a Carol Dale means to a quarterback. Well, it means everything, Ray, because he's probably one of the most disciplined route runners in the history of professional football. And with the many zones that you face today, he not only is a great route runner, but he can help your young receivers a great deal also. As it turned out, Carroll was in for just that one play, and as Foreman gained two, it is second and eight. And Kingsrider replaces Dale, and he is going to wide line, uh, line up as the wide receiver to the left. That was almost intercepted by linebacker Mike Colan. Foreman wound up with it, but Colin had nothing but 13 yards of synthetic turf in front of him. Within inches of being 24 nothing now. As Colin, number 57, watch him. He's got a perfect shot at this. Right through his hands and into the hands of Chuck Foreman. There is no gain on the play, and it is third down and about eight. Offensive line, Alderman, White, Tinglehoff, Gallagher, Yarry. Foreman in motion. Fernandez nails Parkinson. Fernandez got away from Frank Gallagher, I believe it was, and nails Tarkenton, and Fernandez continues his brilliant Super Bowl play. He's involved first with Vic Kingelhoff. Number 75 with his back to you. What a great Super Bowl he had last year against Washington. Gallagher didn't see him coming soon enough to turn and try to pick him up. He's just as fast as Tarkenton. Now Mike Eyshide from deep in the end zone, punting to Anderson and Scott. Eyeside has a fine, fine punt. Back at the Miami 45, Jake Scott trying to get outside. Fine run back to the 43-yard line of Minnesota. CBS has a variety of sports on tap for the winter and spring. In addition to NBA basketball, we've been talking about CBS Sports Spectacular and Eye on CBS Sports. 
specials. Golf also specials, be seeing huh? golf specials, including the Jackie Gleason Inverary Classic in February, the Masters Tournament in April. Then there's the new CBS Golf Championship. This year, the CBS Tennis Classic also will be expanded to one hour a week. That's here on CBS, the best in sports on the number one network. Bob Greasy and company take over first and ten at the Viking 43. Zonka and Mercury Morris. Mercury Morris held firm by middle linebacker Jeff Seaman, number 50, and there might have been a gain of one. Jeff Seaman, number 50, as we mentioned a minute before. The performance of the middle linebacker often dictates how well a team does. Seaman has performed very well all year and continue to do so on that play. Kick comes in, number 21. It is second and nine. Warfield in the slot to the right. Warfield in motion. Zonka. That hole closed at the 38-yard line, and the Dolphins will have a third and five, and it's Jeff Seaman again who made a fine play. Again, let's watch him individually. Watch his quick reactions. This was a passing situation, of course. The Dolphins ran a draw, as Greasy did with success in the first half. Third down, five for the Vikings. Marshall, Page, Larson, Eller, Hilgenberg, Seaman, Winston, Nate Wright, Jeff Wright, Krause, and Bryant. Third and five. Great protection. Paul Warfield at the 11 yard line. After watching him warm up, I thought there'd be no way that he'd be able to play with any degree of effectiveness in this game. It's a fine pass by Greasy and a really a spectacular catch. Bart? Well, Pat, the point I was going to make is that that was a double zone again, and I think the strong safety, Jeff Wright, just made a mistake and blew it. First down at the Viking 11. Zonka to the 7. Carl Eller, Jeff Seaman. From above, let's watch the offensive blocking again. Langer cutting off Larson, who appeared to go the wrong way. Norm Evans blocking on Eller. Seaman over in part of the action at the end. Ten minutes remaining, third period. Greasy now is six of seven. 72 yards. Out of bounds at the six, maybe the five. Winston ran him out of bounds. It's going to be third down and four. You hear so much about what a fine runner Fran Tarkin is, but Greasy is probably just as good a runner. He doesn't do it as much. But he had three big gainers last week against Oakland, two weeks ago, I should say. And he's a good runner. In fact, these two quarterbacks probably throw as well on the move as anybody around. For the Dolphins, it is a third down and four. At the Viking five. Greasy sends Briscoe to the right. Warfield to the left. Mercury Morris. And Bobby Bryant nails him and a marker goes fly. See what the preliminary signal is. According to Greasy, it's defensive holding against Minnesota, but let's see. If so, that means it is a first down and goal for the Dolphins, as the Vikings have consistently today been grievously injured by penalties. 
This is another place uh, where I guess you'd have to say the the Dolphins, uh, the, yes, the Dolphins have a tremendous edge. They are the least penalized team in all of pro football. They were not penalized at all in the first half, and they have not been yet. Now let's watch the signal. The ball is placed at the eight-yard line. Bob Greasy is asking referee Ben Drive to explain this. Holding Minnesota. First down. Now let's see. That play ended out of bounds around the 16-yard line, so it's a half the distance from the 16. But it is a first and goal at the eight and a half. And Tarkenton looks on. Jim Kick is in. He's lined up to the left of Zonka. Zonka, big hole. He's down to the two. Bobby Bryant upsetting. But Wayne Moore did a fine job in front of Zonka. The whole left side of the offensive line does a good job. Kuchenberg, Moore, and Mandich is over there this time, too. Big hole, as you pointed out. Mark? In fact, that's a classic fullback play, that slant play. I don't think there's anyone around today that runs any better than Larry Zonka. For the Vikings, Bud Grant has sent in Bob Lertzema, number 75. He has taken out the free safety, Paul Krauss. Second and goal at the two. Zonka, touchdown! He had three last in the playoff game, the championship game of the AFC against Oakland. He has two today from down level. Somebody just got a piece of him. I think it was Roy Winston. Perhaps it was Hilgenberg. But uh, there's no way to get him down with an arm. 20 carries, 93 yards for Zanka. Morrow holds for a premium with 8.44 left to play in the third quarter. And I think it's pretty safe to say that when the Vikings get the ball the next time, whether they score or not, will dictate whether we have a runaway Miami victory. High above Rice Stadium here at Houston, Texas. I believe the mist has lifted just a little bit, but fortunately we've had no rain. Premium kicks. Gilliam at the five. He gets it out to the 26-yard line. Bob Matheson made the tackle. This is Zonka's last touchdown a few minutes ago. Greasy almost dropped the ball in the exchange from his center. What a fine charge by the offensive line. Let's look again. Jim Kick, who was in the game, didn't even have to block. Parkinson sends Gilliam to the left. And he makes a correction now and has Carol Dale also on the left as a slot back. Parkinson picks up about six where he met Matheson. The Dolphins would be happy to let him do that for the rest of the afternoon. Obviously he could not find anybody open and had to take off. Amazing thing that goes along with that statistic is that he has never been out because of an injury. Carol Dale was in for just the first down play. Kings Rider replaces him now. Second and four. Oh, 
This is Foreman. He has a first down. Manny Fernandez made the tackle. So the Vikings trying desperately to get something going. If you missed the action toward the end of the first half, the Vikings had an opportunity on fourth and one at the Miami Six to go for an almost certain three points. They elected to run for the first down and didn't get it. Bart? Well, yeah, I, think, I think it might be interesting for our viewers to realize why the Vikings have two tight ends in there against this three-man rush. It's an ideal thing to do is run with the ball. First down at the Viking 41. Reed. Oscar Reed picks up six. And he's out to the Viking 47. Gary Larson, number 77, one of the front four of the Minnesota Vikings. And they have been handled very well so far today by that offensive line of the Dolphins. Larson has the unenviable task of facing Larry Little. And that's a tough job for anybody. It is second and four, and Gillian is to the left, and King's Rider to the right. 640, left to play, third quarter. Oscar Reed. And he's going to lose a couple as cornerback Tim Foley, with help, played it very, very well. This was almost a lateral as Francis had to throw it over the head, I would assume, of uh, defensive lineman Burned in Herter out to Oscar Reed. No, it's not quite a lateral, but almost. But he had to throw the ball so high to get it over Den Herter, who's 6 6, that he couldn't get anything on it. Great pursuit by that defensive unit. It was a loss of one. It is third and five. Oscar Reed gets nothing. There was Bob Matheson, and it is fourth and five. And the punter comes on. The special unit. Miami in a three-man defense again, but third and five and trailing 24 to nothing. It's hard to understand a call like that. But as uh, Bart pointed out a minute ago, when you look at that three-man line defensive setup, you think you ought to be able to run against it. Nobody can. It is fourth down and four, and Mike Eyshide will be punting to Jake Scott, who is back, uh, backing up around the 10-yard line now. Off the side of his foot, but a good roll for Minnesota. And it's going to be down at the 11-yard line of the Miami Dolphins. And with 5.03 left to play in the third quarter, the Dolphins, with a 24-0 cushion, will again have the football. Boy, they need a break. Mm. A miracle. Marv Fleming, two Super Bowls at Green Bay, now three with Miami. First down, Dolphins from the Dolphin 11. Mercury Morris to the 14. Carl Eller has him in his grasp, and it's going to be second down and seven. Looking back on it now, barring a sudden turn here in the fortunes of the Minnesota Vikings, the tone of this game was set when Bob Greasy took the Dolphins after the opening kickoff on a perfectly executed 10-play touchdown drive with Larry Zonka getting the touchdown. What the Dolphins need right now is a sustained drive. What the Vikings need is no first downs by Miami, Miami and get the ball back just as soon as possible. Zonka. 
first down, 27 yard line. Wally Hilgenberg made the tackle. From behind Larry Zonka, you get a chance to see the awesome power and the great touch which he has. 21 carries, 107 yards already. Wally Hilgenberg got the run. It's a first down at the Miami 27. Briscoe comes right. Warfield goes left. This time, Jim Marshall nails Zonka behind the line, and Gary Larson took Greasy back about eight yards. They just barely got that exchange off between the two of them. Zonka, I think that time, was laid off the ball. The coaches... Just by looking at him, you wouldn't know who was winning, would you? There is, I think, just a little bit of satisfaction showing on Don Shula's face, Pat. Jim Kick now checks in as it is a second down and 12. The ball just inside the Dolphin 25. Three minutes left to play in the third quarter. This is Zonka. Seaman gets him at the 30, and Miami will have a third down and eight. Zonka now is very near the uh, Super Bowl record for most yardage rushing in a game. It's held by Matt Snell in the game against Baltimore, 121 yards in 30 attempts. That's the Super Bowl record, and Zonka is very close. Will Greasy put it in the air on third and eight? He has Warfield to the left, and Bobby Bryant goes with him. He has Briscoe to the right. Zonka did not pull the Vikings this time. The two tackles pinched in, Page and Larson, and the Vikings will get the football with about two minutes left to play in the third period. 77 along with Page, 88 of the tackle. Bobby Bryant is dropping back for the anticipated punt from Larry Seipel, who has not had an opportunity today to do uh, very much punting. Bryant is a single safety. He's the only deep man. Let's see if the Vikings try to put a rush on the kicker. Rather short kick, and the Vikings are going to get pretty good field position at the Minnesota 43-yard line with one minute and 34 seconds left to play in the third quarter. That was Tim Foley who downed the ball. So let's see what Tarkenton comes up with here in the way of strategy. He'll have a first down at the Viking 43 when play is resumed. Sanders. I think it is. I think it is Doug. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Among those in attendance, Doug Sanders, the professional golfer, and to his right, Andy Williams here at Rice Stadium. For the Vikings, first and ten, Vikings 43 yard line. This is Foreman. Foreman gets it just across the 50. It'll be second down and three. Bob Matheson made the tackle. Now Carol Dale again was in on first down, but I believe. Looks like Ed Marinaro is coming into the backfield. Number 49. Now, Marinaro replacing Foreman is a fine receiver. This is Marinaro. 
and he is just about reached the 46-yard line. It's going to be very close for first down. Manny Fernandez, the former Cornell star, Marinaro, around the 46. And this is going to call for a measurement, I do believe. Foreman immediately comes back into the game, and it is a first down for the Vikings with 30 seconds left to play in the third quarter and the clock running. Dolphin defense. And the man in the white raincoat there at the upper left of your screen is Kansas City Chief Head Coach Hank Scram. Foreman. Foreman hit hard by Nick Bonacotti, and it's going to be second and ten with eight seconds left to play in the third period. See, Hank Stram's Kansas City Club led the Vikings by what score in their Super Bowl game, of Pat? It was 16-0 at the half, and the uh, Vikings came back and scored. Kansas City went on to win 23-0 as Nick... 23-7, uh, I beg your pardon, as Nick Bonacotti comes out. And an extra defensive back goes in. Charles Babb is the back that's gone in to replace Bonacotti. This is a second and ten, and Marinaro is back in for Minnesota. This is caught by Gilliam on a comeback, and the gun has just sounded. That's the end of the third quarter with the score. Miami 24, Minnesota nothing. Let's pause now for a word from your local station. Joe Foss a minute ago, Tony. Preceding announcement was brought to you by the National Football League. The gentleman there in the horn rim glasses, and I think that's a gray raincoat, if right. I read my monitor correctly, Pat, is Joe Robbie, the man who's the head of the Miami Dolphins. This is a third and eight for Minnesota. <laughs> Stu Boyd, great catch, first down, 29-yard line. He has certainly been the key receiver for Minnesota today. He certainly has. Bart, how's he managed to get open like he has? Well, he runs down and he stays about as close to the man who is assigned in that particular area and then just steps just outside his area and a great throw. You've got to be able to throw darts and complete them like that. Vikings first down, 29-yard line. Mumford is out. Bonacani is back in. Gillian. 20-yard line. It's going to be second and one. Tim Foley depending. Depending on the play. Now number 82, Jim Lash, the rookie receiver, has moved in for Minnesota. 
Fran Tarkenton's got a couple of things, more than that, actually, to keep his eyes on right now. All those Miami defenders, and uh, he's got to take a cautious look at the clock from time to time. The kind of pass he just completed to Gilliam is the kind he needs. Jim Lash, the intended receiver, but overthrown as Curtis Johnson was over to defend. And a linebacker dropping off was Mike Colon. It is going to be third and one. And in comes a Kings rider and Goodrum. Out will go Lash and Gilliam. 14-16 left to play. Matheson has left the defensive unit now, and Bob Hines has checked back in, number 72. 24 nothing Dolphins. First down, Oscar Reed. He's down to the 13. Jake Scott from the secondary made the tackle, but the drive stays alive. Back to the same place again in short yardage, except this time it works. Good cut by Reed and a good charge by the Viking offensive line in this case. Jake Scott riding Oscar Reed to the ground with Dick Anderson helping. Jim Lash has come back in and he'll line up wide to the left drawing the attention of cornerback Curtis Johnson. Gilliam is off to the right. This is complete inside the five to Jim Lash with Curtis Johnson making the tackle. At around the, uh, between the three and four yard line. And this is close to a first down. And by far the best looking drive Minnesota's been able to put together. Of course, you're bound to have a letdown on defense when you look up there and see leading 24 nothing in the fourth, fourth period. It is second down and less than one for a first down. The ball, just length of the ball, inside the four. Parkinson is going to run it in for the touchdown. For the second time today, Tarkenton ran a same type of play, this time to put the Vikings on the board with 13.25 remaining in the game. A designed play again, and designed for Francis to run, and not really ever looking for a pass to any great degree. He's put it away and took it in behind the blocks of Oscar Reed and Marinero, I believe. Kings Rider, I beg your pardon. Paul Krauss, the holder, for Fred Cox. So now our attention is going to turn from the Viking offense to the Viking defense, as it is squarely up to that Viking defensive unit to try and turn the ball back quickly to the offense. Get closer. <laughs> Maybe we'll get lucky. Cox will kick to deep men Jake Scott 13 Mercury Morris 22 uh oh we're going to try and... who has it Vikings have it it hit one of the Dolphins 
It went the required distance, and it's a first down for the Vikings at the 49-yard line of Miami. There is a real art to executing this as well as Fred Cox just did it. The Dolphin player was trying to get out of the way, hoping the ball would go out of bounds. It's Bob Matheson, I believe, that the ball hit. And there was a penalty on the play. I must admit, I turned away. I did not see what it was. Was it offside on the kickoff? Offside on the kickoff. And the Vikings now have had so many costly penalties. The return of the second half kickoff by Gilliam, a brilliant return, nullified by a clipping penalty. Just one of the penalties that has hurt Minnesota. So now, I am sure that Miami will be ever so alert as far as a possible attempt for the Vikings to keep uh, keep control of the ball here. They got different people up there in that front line, uh, front line now. They have uh, some receivers and defensive backs up front. Larry Seipel is over there along with uh, Tim Foley. Those who are used to handling the ball. Curtis Johnson is up close to the front line. Jim Mandich is up near. A swiver. Jake Scott. And he is collared, and I mean literally collared, at the 33-yard line. This Tuesday night, CBS will have the NBA All-Star Game from Seattle at 9.30 Eastern Time. Pat, you'll be there for that. Right, with uh, some of the game's great players. Defeating the East, of course, against the West. People like Pete Maravich and Bob McAdoo and Walt Frazier of the Knicks from the East. And from the West, Chet Walker, Bob Lanier, Sidney Wicks, and Gail Goodrich. The NBA All-Star Game on CBS. Where you can see the best in basketball on the number one network. From the Dolphin, 34-yard line. Zonka to the 37. Brand Tarkenton apparently is going to require some attention on the part of the Minnesota trainer. 24 to 7, less than 13 minutes remaining in the game. Wally Hilgenberg made that last defensive play. Zonka picked up three to second down and seven. He has to be pretty close to that record now. What was it? 121 yards by Matt Snell. All right. Rushing record for an individual in the Super Bowl. Mercury Morris trying to get outside, but he is spun around by Roy Winston, and it's going to be third and about ten, and Jim Kick comes off the bench to replace Morris. Well, yeah, I don't think it's any big secret that because of the situation the Vikings find themselves in there, you're going to see them blitzing a great deal from here on out. They had one on there, and it worked real well. This is a third and ten play coming up. Jim... Jim Kick in the offensive lineup now has the reputation of being a fine blocker as well as a good pass receiver. This is a move that the Dolphins frequently use. It remains to be seen whether or not Greasy will put the ball in the air or not. He has suffered no interceptions. Third and ten. He gets it to the 40, short of a first down. It's going to be fourth and four as Wally Hilgenberg and Jeff Wright made the tackle. So the Vikings will get the ball with about 11 minutes remaining in the game and trailing by 17 points, 24 to 7. Larry Seipel comes on. Bobby Bryant is dropping back, anticipating this punt by Miami. Vikings have 10 men up on the line. Great punt. It's going to be downed around the one or two yard line by Mike Colin. And the Dolphins continue to do just about everything right. So Fran Tarkenton must start the Vikings from the Minnesota three-yard line with 10.47 remaining in the game. Ball 
like that normally takes off. The ball is kicked like that. It's going to come on this way. From the Viking three. This is Ed Marinaro. And he has it out to around the 14. And this should be a Minnesota first down. Jake Scott made the tackle. Let's see. Uh, check out now the Viking receivers. Gillian, number 42. Jim Lash, number 82. And in the backfield, he has Marinaro and Oscar Reed. And his tight end is... Number 83, Stu Voigt. First down, Minnesota. Couldn't quite get the ball to a slanting Jim Lash as one of the few times today Tarkenton was off target. He has thrown the ball extremely well so far and he's going to have to throw it just about every play from here on in. Tarkenton now has thrown the ball 22 times, 16 completions, 145 yards, no interceptions. Now record it is second for, down and 10. Sorry, Ray, the record Thank for completions, by the way, is uh, held by Joe Namath of 17, so Tarkenton is one away. Oscar Reed, He's within about a yard of a first down at the Viking 24, where linebacker Doug Swift made the tackle. Less than 10 minutes now remaining. Mike Colin comes out of the lineup. Bob Hines is going in. The Dolphins have too many men on the field, but they just got their man off. Linebacker Larry Ball just got off on time. Third and one. And Oscar Reed, by that second effort, gets a first down at the 26-yard line as middle linebacker Nick Bonacani made the tackle. So let's see what sort of a, a pattern Tarkenton sets up now on first down. Well, the clock uh, becomes ever more important. You see we're approaching the nine-minute mark. And the Vikings need an explosion. First and ten. Oscar Reed couldn't hold on at the 31-yard line. It would have been a gain of about five because he was well covered by linebacker Doug Swift. Ray, I think that Fran is going to have to hit another one of those big passes like he did to John Gilliam or at least try to go a little bit farther up the field than he is because he's just running out of time with those short throws. It is now second down and 10, and veteran Bill Brown, number 30, comes into the backfield. Bill Brown is the all-time leading Viking pass receiver. So he uh, presents an added threat coming out of the backfield. Second and 10. <laughs> There is Bill Brown, and he gets it out for about eight yards to the 34. Doug Swift made the tackle with help from Bob Matheson, and with eight and a half minutes remaining, it is going to be third down and two. This drive started at the Viking three after a beautiful punt by Larry Seifel. And again, those type of passes, although they do buy first downs, just don't get enough points on the board quickly enough. Hines goes in. Matheson goes out. Bill Brown 
Gets it out around the 36 yard line. He ran into Bill Stanford. First down. So the veteran Bill Brown immediately uh, makes his presence known after coming into the game. Catches a pass. Makes a third down run for a first down. Hines goes out. Matheson goes in for Miami. Chuck Foreman on the sideline not playing at the moment because the two backs in the game, Marinero and Brown, both are better pass receivers. Interference. Defensive back Tim Foley went on the back of intended receiver Doug Kingsrider. And result, first down, Minnesota at the Viking 41. 7.36 left, and you can check this one out yourself. Foley did not even contest this call at all. Marinero, of course, a good bit bigger than Tim, had his body in between, and he had to go ahead and make his commitment. It's going to be a completion anyway. Interference penalty, no question about it, called against Foley. And it's an automatic first down. And it stops the clock. 7.36 remaining. Mumford is out. Linebacker Larry Ball comes in. Gilliam comes right. Lash comes right. This is Marinaro. He just won't go down at the 33-yard line in the grasp of Curtis Johnson. Great effort by Marinaro. Curtis Johnson is really upset. And but for that grip that he had on Marinaro's jersey, the Vikings would have had another touchdown. That pass interference penalty by Tim Foley a minute ago, by the way, was the first penalty of the game against Miami. That's another one of many reasons they win. This is a first down. It was intended for Jim Lash running that deep sideline pattern. It stops the clock with 6.43 remaining. Next Sunday, following the NBA game, a pro basketball special, The Best in Basketball, will be on CBS at 5 o'clock Eastern Time. Special traces the history of the NBA with all of the great players and their influence on the changes in the game. It all starts with a visit to the Hall of Fame in Springfield, Massachusetts, which we enjoyed very much. Carol Dale, number 84, has replaced Lash after Lash had run that deep pattern, and it's a Viking second and ten at the Miami 32. Gilliam comes right, and Foley moves out with him. Dale goes left, and he draws the attention of Johnson, plus a linebacker. Stu Boyd and Gilliam were both down there deep, but it is going to be third and ten, and uh, I'm not sure that the word critical is even uh, puts emphasis enough on what's coming up here in the way of a third down and ten for Minnesota, Pat. Well, I think one thing that uh, Tarkenton and the Vikings now have going for them is that three-man rush by the Miami defensive line. They've just got, by sheer strength of numbers, more blockers than the, uh, than the Dolphins have rushers. 18 for 27 for a total of 182 yards. And that is a record number of completions in a Super Bowl game for Fran Tarkenton. The old record held by Joe Namath in Super Bowl three. Third down, 10. Intercepted, Curtis Johnson, five, nine-yard line, and tempers are beginning to get frayed as Johnson comes up with the first interception of the game. So the Miami defense taking the ball out of the air in the person of Curtis Johnson, number 45, Pat, let's go down to Bart. Thank you very much, Ray. Our viewers here are going to get a great look at this Miami defense. I think on the lineup you can see the beautiful spacing they maintain across the field. Just keep your eyes on these three deep backs and how they proportion themselves across this field and how Johnson is cutting in. The ball is a little bit overthrown here, but nevertheless he was in great position and makes an outstanding interception. This is one of the reasons they're so tough. So a couple 
this turnover on the part of the interception, throw in penalties in key situations, and that's the reason for Miami 24, Minnesota 7, 6 minutes and 24 seconds remaining. And a Dolphin offensive line of Moore, Kuchenberg, Langer, Little, Evans, and tight end Jim Mandich. Larry Zonka. He's out to the 17-yard line, and we're going to keep a close look on the unofficial rushing yardage because while Tarkenton broke the pass completion record, Larry Zonka comes very, very close to the rushing record. And as uh, Pat pointed out, it came when Matt Snell ran for 121 yards in the Jets' victory over Baltimore. And unofficially, he has broken Snell's rushing record with that run right there. He's now got 123 yards. Snell took 30 carries to do it. Second down, three. Zonka has a first down, and undoubtedly he has a new Super Bowl record now. And the clock keeps ticking away. And we now know that the great Larry Zonka, leader on the ground of this, this unrelenting Miami running attack, which first expressed itself today in the opening drive of the game. Ten plays, just two passes by Greasy, both completed. And the announcement has just been made to this capacity crowd at Rice Stadium that Larry Zonka has indeed set a new individual record. First down and 10. Jim kicked Burroughs for several yards. There's been so much talk about uh, how this Dolphin team felt about winning this Super game, Super Bowl game, so they might be favorably compared with the only other team that won two back-to-back, -back, the Green Bay Packers. They felt if they could do that, that that would be one of the things that might prove them to be certainly one of the great teams of all time. And what uh, certainly must be a disappointing afternoon for the young man we saw there an instant ago, Fran Parkinson. Zonka adds yet a couple of more yards to that impressive total, and when the ball is next snap, barring a timeout by the Vikings, we will have less than four minutes remaining. Carl Eller made the tackle on that last play. Somebody asked Don Shula how much this game meant to him and if that comparison meant that much, and he said it certainly did, but of more importance to him was in Super Bowl competition, he was just trying to get up to 500 because he had won only one and lost two, one with the Dolphins, one with the Colts. It looks like he's done a great job this time. Third down and eight. Zonka is met by Seaman and Roy Winston. And we have a marker down inside the 15-yard line. Alan Page hit Greasy, and a marker is down, and number 88, Alan Page, is arguing vehemently. Jim Marshall, his teammate, close friend. So once again, we are going to have a penalty against the Vikings that is going to hurt their cause, although, in all honesty, of course, this one comes when the game is well out of hand. We're in a nest of Dolphin fans up in the upper deck here at Rice Stadium, and they have been chanting, we're number one for about the last quarter and a half. No what? As Mr. say, Pat, ordinarily I don't like to point out things that we do not all get an opportunity to see, but I think it should be pointed out that after that penalty was measured off, the guy that went and patted Bob Greasy on the back in a very friendly way was one Alan Page. Howard Twilley has checked in, number 81, and Paul Warfield is out. First down at the 40-yard line. Goes Zonka on his relentless way again out to the 45-yard line. We would like to point out that Super Bowl VIII was produced by Bill Fitz and directed by Tony Verna. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Second down and six. Mar Fleming, number 80, playing in his fifth Super Bowl, has come in now. He's a tight end. 
Twilly lines up as a wing back to the left with less than three minutes remaining in the game. Jim Kick to the 49, and it's going to be third down and one, and a marker goes down. Here is Alan Page, and he has been handled extremely well today. That's about the only thing you can say by the offensive line for Miami. Bob Kuchenberg and Alan Page getting rid of some of that frustration. It has to be a frustrating afternoon for all of the Minnesota Vikings. This is their second trip to Super Bowl. They lost to Kansas City 23-7. to They trailed Miami 24-7. to Well, we have offsetting personal fouls now. That had to be that exchange between Kuchenberg and Page that you just saw. So with 2.45 remaining, let's see, we did have a, the run came to within a, about a yard of a first down, and I'm a little bit at a loss here, Pat. The penalty, the infractions occurred after, after the play was dead, so the gain stands. Then the offsetting penalties, so it is going to be third and short yardage. With two minutes and 45 seconds remaining. So Fran Tarkenton, who wanted so very much to win this game for his Minnesota Viking team, and as he has expressed it over and again, the uh, he wanted to forever have that label of loser erased. In fairness to him, I think it's already been erased with the two victories this year. Third and about a foot, the ball at the 50. And uh, the markers go flying as we'll find out now where the Vikings offside, where they drawn offside by an illegal procedure. Offside Minnesota, first down. First down, Dolphins, and I think that penalty, Pat, coming at this stage of the game just uh, sort of puts the final stamp on the frustrations felt by that man, Alan Page, and by the Vikings as a team today. Well, Tarkington has said beautifully that quarterbacks don't lose football games, teams do. And he's also said that quarterbacks don't win them, teams do. And I think that's the best way to describe everything, Pat. I couldn't agree more. First down, Dolphins, Viking 45. Jim Kick gets a yard or so, and another 30 seconds will be erased from the clock. There's so many things about a game of this magnitude that are going to be hashed and rehashed as time passes. This man, Don Shula, put his Dolphins through a rigorous training schedule getting ready for this game. No time off. Very, very tough schedule, whereas Bud Grant gave his Vikings a whole week off before they came to Houston and began workouts again. So the way they approached it has to be something that will be discussed. 42-year-old Don Shula. There goes Zonka to the 38-yard line. And I'm sure that when this game uh, is being discussed, talked about, written about, the word dynasty is going to be mentioned in reference to this Miami Dolphin team built.
Once again, we got a magnificent bird's eye view, a high-flying bird's eye view of Rice Stadium here in Houston, Texas. As we are a minute and 58 seconds away from the conclusion of Super Bowl VIII. <laughs> Before the game, we were standing around down on the field, and the Viking mascot came roaring out, and that fish, the dolphin, came roaring out the challenge out of the stand. For Miami, third down and three at the Minnesota 38-yard line. Zonka and Kick are the running backs. Zonka has been in on every offensive series, every offensive play. Howard Twitty in motion. Zonka. Jim Marshall straightens him up. Very close to another Miami Dolphin first down. That carry right there is number 31 for Zonka. So that breaks Matt Snell's old record, too, of 30 carries, 30 attempts in a game. He already had broken the yardage record. And this is not, a, this is not an old Miami Dolphin team, we should point out. Next Sunday, the CBS Sports Spectacular comes back with a diversified schedule of outstanding events, and we'll tell you about them right after this play. Fourth and uh, about a foot. And Zonka gets the foot and a first down. Now about that uh, CBS Sports Spectacular next Sunday. The first two weeks are going to feature 25 of the greatest heavyweight championship fights in history. First week, you'll see the Lewis Smaling fights, Willard Dempsey, Perpo Dempsey, Dempsey Tunney, and many, many others. That ought to be great. Opening show will also cover the Moscow skates of 1973. Zonka is leaving. What a day. Larry Zonka, who has set an individual record and by his play set the early tone of this game. He is replaced by Don Nottingham. This is Jim Kick getting it inside the 30. And with the Dolphins controlling the ball here in the final seconds, it uh, sort of puts the topping on an outstanding performance. There's Nick Bonacani, the leader on the field of the Miami Dolphin defense. The final seconds now are ticking away. Bob Kuchenberg leaves. Wayne Moore leaves. Herb Goody comes in. The Miami Dolphin fans, some 12,000 strong, count off the final seconds as the Miami Dolphins have duplicated Super Bowls one and two, where the Packers won back-to-back -back championships, and with a resounding and overwhelming victory, the Miami Dolphins have made it two in a row. Pat, just by way of bringing you up to date on uh, that great statistical afternoon that Larry Zonka had, unofficially this is, 33 carries for 145 yards. And Ray, that's going to be a very, very happy Miami Dolphin dressing room. And I think we should uh, point out at this time that all of our broadcasters who have presented the games to you folks on CBS television this year, National Football League games, all of our broadcasters are going to be present for a very unusual, and I think you will agree, enlightening and enjoyable post-game mass conference, I guess we should call that. Each man, each one of them will have an opportunity to que question and get the reaction of members of the winning Miami Dolphin team. Jack Whitaker will be hosting. So that is the end of the game with the score. The Miami Dolphins 24, the Minnesota Vikings 7. We'll return to Super Bowl 8 in just a moment. <laughs> 